will be in later. Okay, so we have a quorum. Yes, we do. Have a quorum. Um, we're going to start with the permits right off the get go uh, because uh, Brandy, our secretary, has got to leave at 4 o'clock. So um, we've got a couple of discussions today, too. Yes, we have a bunch of discussions, but we're going to take stuff out of order. Okay. We have a second on that? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. All right, James. Um, first application is for Upperfield Holdings LLC, 108 Little Neck Road. Is it in the one in the plastic here? Yeah. Sure. All right. Um, it's um, the removal of an existing 189.69 feet uh, linear feet of bulkhead and replacement of it in kind and in place with new vinyl bulkhead, increasing the height by 12 inches with an uh, installation of two 10-foot uh, returns on the north and one on the south. A uh, bulkhead will be backfilled with approximately 13 cubic yards of clean uh, sand and within 10 feet landward of the bulkhead, basically keeping it in all our jurisdiction. So that pretty much is the application part specifically for the bulkhead replacement. It is on Fort Pond. Um, it's an older bulkhead put there and probably 60s, 70s, so I recommend that the elevation, um, we go with the 12-inch elevation. So uh, it's fully Blue Book compliant? Yes. Project? There are some bulk are properties that are bulkheaded, some aren't. This is one of the ones, the first ones that are bulkheaded, so um, it would be appropriate for that part of it. The next part of it is construction of a 4 by 94 foot fixed dock attached uh, to the proposed new vinyl bulkhead with 60% open grading, supported by 28 uh, six inch round piles, installation of a three by 12 ramp and hit with handrails at the seaward end of the new fixed dock, installation of a six by 20 float in a T configuration, uh, stabilized by two eight inch round piles and two chocks to prevent the dock from dropping below 2.46 feet uh, of the uh, mean low water. Um, basically, I went back and forth with the applicant, uh, the consultant. Originally, uh, they wanted to go out much further. Um, I told them that they had to be held to the 100 foot pier line, which is all the other docks in the area. So, um, there is also a dredged area where the, where the proposed dock is going to be. Um, it's a little bit deeper. It actually goes past it. Now, James, what is the exact length of this dock from the mean high water? I mean, to the. It's not. Got 94 feet, and then you got a 12 foot, because it's 10, it's 104. So this dock is going to go past. Where I was hoping she'd be here uh, past the uh, go over with us. So um, as it is right now, because uh, this is a revision of the original plans. Originally, they had the dock inshore where they have a dredged, uh, basically dredged little channel here, and it would acquire the proper depth. So as it is right now, the proposed dock, um, 94 feet, would be approvable, but with the float and the ramp, it's right. not approvable. Right. So basically, hold, hold it. I'm going to hold it. Um, so we can have a discussion with the uh, consultant if she, uh, I believe it's Daphne Buckles. Uh, yeah, she was supposed to be here, so well, maybe she'll show up and all that. All right, so I just, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention because I have been working on it for a matter of months here. Then my second application is uh, for uh, Prime Marine. Um, it was uh, brought to our attention that the marina had done some work on the dock and um, it was all uh, done with non-compliant material. So they've come back to uh, apply for a dock replacement, removing all the non-compliant material and replacing it with compliant material. Project description, the applicant proposes to replace the exec existing deck, uh, decking and stringers uh, comprising the existing main timber dock and fixed finger docks located within the northwest section of the marina with non-traded material. The area of the main timber dock is one 
910 square feet. Uh, the combined area of the six uh, fingers are 117 square feet. So basically, this is the old Jackson's Marina. There was work done on the uh, facility when the owner wasn't there and it was uh, notice of violation was given. Um, he's come back to basically uh, replace all the material that was put there with the compliant material. He also, there's a lot of handrails he put up with CCA and also maybe before we issue a permit that they should clear up the other uh, boundary lines they have with us? Um, we had discussed the boundary lines, Billy. That's going to be something that's probably going to take uh, a considerable amount of time. As you know, we had uh, our Kara Back and myself were working on that uh, prior to her uh, stepping down as our attorney. And uh, we were working on that with Mr. Jackson and their attorney at the time. Um, the property has been sold. Mr. Jackson has passed away. And they have uh, new owners. We, I met with them uh, last or well, two weeks ago to discuss the boundary line and to reconfigurate uh, or try to uh, work in reconfigurating or configuring the boundary line where their property becomes uh, which is their property which is on our property and vice versa we're going to have to sit down and it's going to probably be quite a long process in order for this to be achieved um, I think we should move forward on this um, application as far as the dock goes and separate separate out the boundary line and all the other issues that are there because I did bring to their attention the boundary line, which they recognize uh, during uh, the initial meetings that we had, and they are willing to uh, work with us and to uh, rectify that situation. But I think it's going to take quite a considerable amount of time, and we have all of this treated lumber, which uh, should be taken dealt with uh, uh, sooner than later. I agree with you on uh, on that, but also would like to see a timeline on it because um, it's. Before we know it's a year, two years, three years, five years, ten years down the road, down the line, and they're still using our property, and we're still responsible for that property for the freeholders. Yes, so, well, I um, agree with that, and so that's if, why if I you give it. If you give a timeline that the, on it, then I would agree to it. If well, there's no timeline, I then I'm if not you, well, if you recall back when prior to this owner, we we um, had a set of uh, requirements that the board came up with. Yes. Okay. So that was that was presented to the prior owner, and we were very close to having that work out. But for whatever reason, you know, they closed their deal, and the, the new owner took over. And obviously, Mr. Jackson is now deceased. Now, you know, I store my boat there currently. I used to be in East Quag. I moved it over there so I could get better water depth. Um, and those folks are trying to clean up, and they have cleaned up the environment there quite substantially. And I sat in on that meeting. And you know the indication that I got was that they want to remedy everything that they can. They want to be good stewards of uh, our area. Uh, they want to be successful. They want to work out this boundary agreement. But it, it, it's a little bit more cumbersome because of the thought process that the board uh, was moving in in terms of how we're handling sewage, better way to handle sewage and get the best uh, water quality initiative out of the project. So we're moving in that direction, but I think that they need to remedy getting that uh, incorrect material that they used uh, they need to they need to get compliant with um, with our regulations a lot sooner than I think we're going to be able to get lawyers to work out the boundary uh, agreement so if you I agree with I agree with trustee Pell we need yeah. to resolve the boundary agreement yeah. but they need to get that uh, incorrectly placed material out of the system yeah because this is uh, everybody if you listen to me I said that I'm for the project fixing the, the wood getting out of there, but I want a timeline on how long they're going to be. That's all I ask. So I, I, I if can't. they're going to say within two years or within a year, it's fine. But before we know it, it's going to be well, five, five to ten years. That's what, what I'm afraid getting of. The, getting the stock material replaced? No. The, the boundary line settled. Well, I, I think a lot of that's going to depend on our ability to, to work it out as well. I, I would give it the, uh, the year that the permit is good, the first year of the permit, uh, that because the, you know, it's a one-year permit. I would say within one year we should be able to. Okay, then put a cover on the permit then. Well, I mean, okay, that's not a problem. But I, this is really important to get this. It is. We're the environment. I is. And I realize that. And we went that's there. The one I, that's why yeah. I told you about yeah. it. I says, I said, you go by every day. You didn't even notice it. I go by there once and I saw it. Yeah, so, because there um, was a there was a there was a barge there. Once the yeah. barge is removed, I seen it, Billy. Yeah. 
I, I don't even go to that. I don't go anymore. by there every day, Billy. Yeah. I go. I was fishing in the ocean all summer, so I was literally okay. not in Hampton that's, Bay's in daylight. That's on the northern part of the docks. If you're going through the Shinnecock Canal, you may see it. I mean, I pull out of so, there and go yeah. south. I don't so, know that yeah. can, we're going to advance that one. Can we advance this one, please? The dock, and yeah. then we're going to work on. We've already had discussions. We we, so I'd like to advance the. the uh, can Thank you. Put a cover on it for one year. For one, yes. It's a one-year permit. It's a one-year permit, and I don't know how you want to word it or whatever. We'll talk to Rich or Martha as far as needing to have this boundary line agreement. This has been something that's been around here for yes. a lot longer than my tenure on the board, and and I brought we brought all the information to the attorneys, and they have it. So now we have to bring it to our attorney, Martha, who has not right. we, even dealt with the show. We, we worked hard on putting together a package that we thought would satisfy what the board wanted to do initially when we talked about um, squaring away this boundary agreement. But no. some of the players have changed. So it was a good no. plan then that we came up with at the board. So we'll try and resurrect it. No. We'll give it the best shot. That's all we can do. D Daphne, uh, you want to look at your uh, review your application? Sure. Please. Bring back um, Daphne Bourne is here, to, uh, consultant for. So we're going to go back to 108. 108 Little, Little Nick Road, yes. Hello. Hello, Daphne. Um, the bulkhead returns and such on the application is uh, is okay. It's the uh, length of the dock that we have uh, that you proposed. There's a hundred foot peel on here. So what you need to have figured out is from the mean high water to the outer terminus of this dock to be a hundred feet or less. So you're looking at my more recent yes. submission? Yes, it would be uh, September 4th. Okay. Okay, so um, I've had a number of discussions with my client, and um, per, per my submission, uh, he's got a 24-foot powerboat that needs... Um, I believe it's, what is it? Hold on, I have it. Two and a half feet of water? I think it's up to 20 inches, something like that. I have it in my notes here. <coughs> 15 to 20 inches of draft is what I have. Uh, 20 inches? Yeah. So the concern, uh, I mean, we, we really tried to pare this down as much as possible. Uh, we don't want to relocate it from where we have it simply because we're trying to keep it between the two patches of vegetation um, and that becomes problematic with the Army Corps because uh, once you go over vegetation they want you to elevate it and that's just gonna look ridiculous uh, to make a bridge over uh, this patch of vegetation. I've spoken also with the DEC, who was ready to issue me a permit for uh, our original proposal at 125 feet out into the water back in July. They've been holding off on that, basically pending uh, my discussion with this board. Um, so we don't have to modify their permit and spend additional money on fees. Makes sense. <clears throat> so. The, the concern here is if we go to 100 feet, it puts us in less than two feet of water. Yep. And that becomes problematic at low tide. Um, so we, we tried to pare this down so it would work for my client with the boat that they have. Uh, and that they're not limited at low tide with how many people and how much stuff they can put on their boat that they're not going to be able to necessarily get out. Um, but it's our right. 
duties to make sure that the project complies to our blue book, which if you had a 100-foot fixed pier dock, no ramp, no float, and a mooring ball offshore, then the, the applicant would be able to access the dock on most of the tides here, it looks like, um, and would be compliant what we need as far as, you know, appreciable depth of water and also uh, allowing to use his property. Mike, is that is that a question? Was What's that with the engine? Here. Was that with his outboard engine all the way down? Because he could tip it up just for a little bit to come in if it's that low. You know what I mean? Like, you, you tilt your engine up a little bit when you're coming in. Because you could get it to be compliant and be pretty close to what you need on that 20 inches if he has power trim. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not that well, far the, off if the you The fixed up. portion well, of the dock right now is at 94 feet. It's just the once you put the ramp on with the float that that's where you're getting that additional 10 feet beyond your code but that's getting us to a little bit more than two feet of water yeah but we can only go to 100 feet here so that's right. what you that's how you have to figure this how am i going to get to 100 feet i mean the adjoining property oh. or not the adjoining two properties north of that or the next dock that's right here is very similar the applicant it's a similar topography on the bottom uh, the closer you get to shore the deeper it is it's about 2.5 2.6 feet there's a dredge channel along the beach here and that's where the uh, the dock on the property to the north is it's right in that deeper water so it allows the boat to rest at um, at the dock in in 2.6 feet at low water well okay so we did some research. We pulled permits um, on one, two, three, four, five properties. There was one at 98 Little Neck Road that was at 106 feet. Um, and it, every, everyone shows that they're in two and a half feet of water, but miraculously they show that. It doesn't, not everyone shows actual soundings. It's kind of like there's a miraculously two and a half feet of water. Now, there's maybe half of those properties have real soundings that were actually done. So I almost feel like we're being penalized for doing real soundings where some of these people just kind of said, here's the end of my dock and here's two and a half feet. So uh, I, I'm trying to do the best that I can here for my client and, I, you know, I don't know. Well, you're, you're doing I, the right I just, thing. I don't. You're trying to do the right thing. Right. I, I understand. Yeah, I, I respect If that. you were to pull the dock back into two and a half feet of water and move it ten feet north here, you'd acquire what we need. You would you'd hit two and a half feet of water at mean low water and the dock would be within a hundred foot pier line and then the the boater would just have to go transition across that shallow water at, at a higher tide. In but order for you to go offshore that flat, which is putting you out beyond a hundred feet, which is our pier line. And then, and then, and then, then you're looking for chocks and everything, and you don't even acquire uh, enough water at that point. So, but then they're limited to when they can use their boat, which well, we're not in the business of making sure that these docks. Uh, you know, we're giving you what our rules and regulations are as far as the parameter of the dock and what what would work. You know, legally here and uh, somewhat functionally because you said uh, you said 18 inches of water or 15 inches of water there's a foot and a half of water or almost two feet of water the whole way in here I, I just I just I don't understand if if there's not a reasonable amount of water at the allowable maximum why you as the trustees couldn't accommodate the additional 10 feet isn't that you have to go to a public hearing why well, we don't even have a mechanism no. really to do that i mean basically what we try and do is get these projects to fit into this blue book i mean what you're basically talking about is going to require us to go to a public hearing to change the blue book to extend a pier line right well, I don't know. Is yes, that really what, the case? I don't that's what we've done in the past. We've uh, polled the board, and if they want to make the pier line from 100 to 125 feet, if they're in favor of that, right. then we'll push it towards a public hearing. At that point, we would ask comments from the public, lengthening our pier line in specific areas. 
Just, I just, I just don't feel that not not necessarily every property fits into the parameters of the blue book. So this but, is a case right. where that. But you do acquire enough water at probably seventy-five feet here. Right, but Correct. then I have to go through this shallow area, and if I have six people on my boat that make the boat sink down an additional couple of inches, and I need eighteen inches of of depth, and I have eighteen inches here, and I want to go out at low tide. I, I just don't think that that You're talking to a guy who had to move me. his, I had to move my boat from Marina A to Marina B because of this exact thing. I, uh, you know what I mean? Well, I couldn't keep it here because I, I didn't have enough water. So I, I hear you what you're saying. It's just. Well, the dock that's shown on your, uh, the other dock that's shown here that's uh, already existing is, has a very similar situation. And that's why it's at a, at a shorter length because it acquired the uh, water depth that's uh, necessary for a float. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, they're probably less than the 10 feet that I'm asking for away in the depth. And I don't know what their actual depth is. Uh, I, I probably have it in my notes here. But I, well, I, I remember going back and forth with the applicant because they wanted to push the dock out like you did further out, and it was actually shallower closer to the beach, and that's why the dock is situated where it is. <clears throat> I just, I, because um, if you cut it back to 100 feet, then that puts the float in just under two feet of water, which. You'd bring it back farther back, you get the, where you get the 2.6 feet, and, and move it over, and you get 2.6 feet right yep. here. Right, but then that actually traps them, is what I'm saying. So that is very limiting as to when they're actually allowed to leave because there's, you can't really get out of here. That's the problem. So you're actually better off leaving it at the two feet of water so you could <coughs> go straight out into the deeper water. Unless they get a pontoon boat. I don't know. Well, I mean, we draw a couple of inches. It's it's um, more problematic to was it was the push twenty it inches it back with, the, with the outboard all the way down or was that tilted up? Do you know because if they just have to tilt the engine up a little bit to get by that ten feet and then put the engine back down, then they're they're fine. So we all go into shallow water. You tilt the engine up a little bit and you get over that. That uh, I'm not exactly sure about that. It looks about ten or fifteen feet the sand, the lower water here so it's not a substantial amount so, of so that's what i'm saying is if they, if they could just kick the motor up in the extreme low tide yep. situation just get right across it and then you can yep. just put the motor back down and just go on their merry way you know what i mean it's a, i got to do that pulling out of, of many places that i go to um you know i tilt it i tilt them up and then we're a shallow bay you know so you, you may be okay we may be talking about do you want to uh, approach your uh, clients again and ask Find them that out. question? Because, I mean, basically, they I know for a fact they don't want to go beyond the 1.8 feet. They do not want to go back into here because they feel it's more restrictive to go back here where it would be more difficult to cross over this foot and a half of water where if they're actually at the 100 feet. Well, you can put a 100 foot dock and then put a mooring ball off, then off, you can put a mooring offshore so that they can have a tender boat, a small engine to access the boat. Well, that that's, seems that's, to be a little crazy too. I don't know. Well, that I mean, all you gotta do is hit the button on the throttle, you know, on the on the control throttle, and the engine tilts up, and then you can get into a little shallow water for ten feet, yeah. And, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how it works. It's not that big a boat. Was it your twenty-three or twenty-four footer? Right. Yeah, they, they are trying to keep a boat here that doesn't only have to be limited to the bay. They want to be able to go out into the ocean, so that's... But, right, but, but today the industry for boats is moving in the direction of these, these outboards for versatility and the engines tilt up for that yeah. reason. I, so I, you, you're talking about, you, you may be fine, they, you, they you, may be fine. Yeah, you have an approvable permit shortening the dock and moving it 10 feet over. You get the aggregate water and it complies to the blue book. You're just gonna, and you also have to remember there are shoals and flats on your way out to the uh, beyond that to the channel too. So you know this isn't the only shallow water in uh, the Fort Pond that you're gonna run a, run across. Right on. 
absolutely. Maybe okay. If you speak to them, if the, if the boat's designed to do that, yeah. as most of them are, the outboards, you may be absolutely no issue at all. I would reach back to them and just have that conversation. Okay. Um, and it'll work for everybody. No. I just, I, I don't really understand why 10 feet is so hard. I, d I just don't understand when we're... The trouble is, you give you 10 feet, then the dock alongside you wants another 10 feet. Three, three, four, we know we're, well, we're past the 100 feet. It's against feet. the regulations. Yeah, it's yeah, against the regulations. Against That's just what I'm saying. It's, 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 right, so our board... We, we had adopted regulations and manage, management plans for all the creeks and harbors. If you see that this is... If you think this is inappropriate, or your client thinks it's inappropriate, well, then... There's a, there's a mechanism to put it through a public hearing, extending the pier line, at which we will look at the whole west side of Fort Pond from the launching ramp all the way to the college, look to see the depths and the lengths of the docks, and if we acquire 120, at 125 feet, there's say 10 more docks can be had with 30 inches of water, then it would be something that would be uh, approvable as far as us uh, initiating a different pier line. It's that process. takes quite a while, though. It's a process. I mean, I believe there's a consultant here, uh, First Coastal, Billy Mack, that is familiar with changing pier lines and the issues that we've come about in different areas in Merchers Bay and Quantic Bay. We have done it, though. And we have done it. You know, and it's something that if we're going to do it for your client, we want to do it for the whole entire stretch. So if we can get 20 more properties that when we extend that pier line out 25 feet, would accommodate their float, their dock, and their boat, then we would have done a good thing because we would have, you know, uh, basically allowed each and every property to be consistent along that stretch. Right. I mean, the reality of the situation is, is that nobody necessarily wants to build a longer dock because it's more expensive, it's more to maintain, right. but if it's not going to accommodate right. their needs, then... Well, I, we've it's given you two uh, two alternatives: either shorten it back up to the, you know, the wa acquired water depth, which would be adequate for the float, or you can tr see if the board would be interested in to doing a public hearing, and we'll do some fact finding and, right. you know, go through that. Avenue. Right. Because then the next guy shows up and he wants to put some trawler in there, and he needs six feet of water, and he wants something. You know, it's going to create a mess. So that's why we were trying to have regulations that we agreed upon ahead of time, to keep things kind of nice and tidy over there I mean you do have two alternatives to resolve the issue either a shorter dock or looking into uh, extending the pier line well if we bring it to the, the hundred foot mark and the dock is at two feet of water would the board be amenable to approving something like that which would be in less than two, the two and a half feet sure. which technically would not meet the regulations just the dock no float and no ramp well, with the float, with the chops. Well, that's that's a that's a. Because that's what we're proposing right now. Is it in less than two and a half feet of water? Yeah. Well, no, we we'd, we'd be coming back, right? It would be it within the pier it'd line, be but it would be pier line, but it would. But she'd be on the shallow spot instead of doing it when she hits the two and a half feet. We generally like um, to stop them when they hit the two and a half. Can I just put this on hold for next meeting? I want. James and you to do a little research because we've done three or four docks that were yeah, but those were at like 2.3 okay. feet, not okay 1.8. I don't have that information. Do you want to sit with Daphne and look at the other docks that we've approved and the DEC has approved with chocks to see the depth of water underneath the I chocks? I don't think we've that's never, I don't think we've gone under two feet. Okay, for a, yeah. for a okay. I don't think there's enough water for it, like no. crabs to go on the horseshoe crabs and stuff like that to get caught. You need to put this on hold, I, if, if yeah, because there's no way we're going to resolve this. No, I think we should put it on hold. And why don't you, I mean, talk to the clients, talk to the clients, and we'll come back next time. Um, and I'll, you know, if, if you really want to pursue the uh longer dock then maybe we should have the uh bank constables go down there and do depth soundings along the beach yeah. to see if well, it's something that would be uh, approachable for us to do that's a long process though and it seems to be that they want to get a resolution 
sooner than that. So you well, should talk to your clients. I think the more pressing issue for my client is their bulkhead replacement. Um, they do want the dock, but if it's something that could be it's maybe separated, I don't know. That's something well, that's, I could discuss with yeah. them. Well, that's why I started out when I read, you weren't here, I read the bulkhead application separate for the board and then I said now we have a dock application which which I was going to get into is going to be problematic so, mm -hmm. so if you want to why don't you ask your client if they just want to replace the bulkhead um, that you have proposed on here because the board was okay with that well you, you weren't here when we discussed it so um, Ann wasn't here so um, do you want me to read that to I mean, if you're going to do that then we're going to need new new plans and new uh yeah. well that's all that completely things. feasible right. but that's that's an alternative to all the alternatives i guess right. yeah um because like i said the dc was ready to issue us a permit yeah, for the whole have, entire thing we have a hundred foot peel line there and we have the ability to pull the dock in and to comply with our peel line and the water depth so there is an alternative for you in this situation right the only thing that I mean my client I told my client that at this point we're basically kind of in limbo because we haven't really heard anything from the Army Corps so as far as resolving anything there's not necessarily a huge rush because we have not yet received any permit from yeah. the Army but, Corps but so. you do have two alternative you know solutions here that I I don't know that they'd be amenable to either of the solutions All right, well, that you've then given have, have me. A, have, so a talk that's have a talk with them the and, and, and come back. back. We'll discuss only it. issue that I see. All right. Okay. Uh, I think you have a couple more. I do. You want to, you want to do Mr. Marchese? You want to get no, some? I want to keep the... You want to, because we only have people here until 4 o'clock, so... All right. Do you want me to do mine? Yes. Uh, I have Michael and Sunday Shermeyer. For Bayside Avenue in East Quag. Sunday is our town clerck. Um, we got know, a, I'd be happy to give up to Rob because he's got to run to a meeting. So if you want to jump on him, I've got like five to do. That would be exciting. We were just going down the list, but what do you. Huh? Rob is one with me. You okay. All right, you only have one so with Ann? I've got one too, I think, with you. No, All right, well. No, well, it's Daphne. Rob, then come on up and we'll get you out of the way. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I'll try to be quick and hold off anything that we can't resolve. Um, and do you want to? Introduce her, or do you want me to just um, start yakking? Go ahead. Just, I'll see. If I can get a little bit. So, um, this is a property um, on Richards Bay, 642 Dune Road in West Hampton. It's owned by James and Lauren Harris. Uh, when they bought the property um, a few years ago, there was a existing fixed dock on the property that sits between two fixed docks to the east and the west. Uh, the dock was probably going to need to be replaced anyway, but it was uh, tossed uh, in the nor'easters earlier this year, which sort of accelerated the time frame for coming into the board. Um, what we proposed was a, um, a fixed four-foot walkway uh, that gets you from the lawn area behind the house uh, over the non-disturbance buffer uh, that was its covenant and buffer associated with a wetland permit that was issued um, for the reconstruction of the dwelling over the high marsh and down uh, only about um, I don't know, maybe 10 feet or so past mean low, low water um, with steps at the end. So you have pedestrian access over the marsh and also a place to launch kayaks, canoes, etc. Um, we designed the dock specifically to get out close to a foot of water at low tide. The soundings that you see on our plan are based on mean lower low water as required by DDC. So where you see about seven inches at the end of the dock, it's probably really closer to a foot at most low tides. Um, the DEC has issued a permit for the dock as it is designed. And we designed the dock specifically to match, to fall precisely in line with the pier line of the two adjoining docks. 
So I had gotten um, an email from Ann uh, back in August, right as I was going away, which is why we're only talking about this now. Um, and it had several comments that required a uh, discussion. So um, a couple of the easy things, there was a request, um, Ann had five items. Number two is that the stairs should be seasonal. Uh, normally they would just put you know untreated wood steps at the end but if the board felt really strongly that either those could come out seasonally or put in aluminum steps or something yeah, I'm that would be sure appropriate what you had in mind but certainly with other things to resolve here I don't I don't think we'd have too much of a problem with that um, the elevation of the walk uh, I had a chance to talk a little bit with James about this this is just kind of coming back to this same issue over and over and over again with the Army Corps of Engineers um, National Marine Fisheries Services demands on every one of these coordinated applications that we have at least four feet of height above the marsh area, regardless of whether we have open grade decking or not. Um, so I would ask the board to allow us to maintain the four foot elevation uh, until such time that you all can maybe work something out with the Army Corps, maybe have a change in your blue book language. Um, right now it says four feet unless the trustees say specifically otherwise on a case-by-case -case basis. If the board feels really strongly about it here, I don't think the applicant has a problem. Uh, we just don't want to end up where we're kind of stuck in, you know, in purgatory forever because they want us here and you want us there. So there is a possibility if the board gave us something in writing, articulating specifically to this application that you wanted it lowered and why you wanted it lowered and provide some evidence of why that should be allowed. I could try to take that back to the core, um, but every time I try to make that argument, I get lots of nasty responses back that this is their protocol and this is what's required. And, and I know there's other agents and consultants that are going through this same thing, and I know the board's aware of it, James is aware of it. Um, I mean, that, that was the standard elevation prior to the uh, light penetrating decking. That's correct. I mean, every dock in, in Shinnecock that had uh, two by 12 decking was four feet and it worked okay. But then the Army Corps went to 54 inches. That was uh, on some of the applications. We've, and that even we've seen that, but I have found so far by trial and error that as long as I propose it at 48 inches, they're accepting it. When I propose it at 30 inches, they come back with 54. Yeah, because they're looking at our rules and regulations as it's literally written. Yeah. I have had a conversation with Amanda Schweitzer on the, uh, at, the, at the Army Corps, mm -hmm. and she said that's the way you have it written. Right. The rest of the uh, wordage that we have afterwards doesn't count to her. That's <laughs> correct. That's why I'm saying if you were perhaps to try as a short-term experiment giving us something in writing specific to this application, I could go back to Naomi Handel, who's really pleasant to deal with, and see if I could convince her otherwise. Well, but I, that's that's going to be. I think it would be a change to our blue book. That's what it. That's what it's going to me. So that's going to be a little more difficult than just that's, us writing a letter. Right. So. Um, Is there any point in trying with a letter? I think if if oh you mean specific to this application, well. I mean, James was men mentioning you're going to try sort of a, a larger scale campaign. Yes. It would be interesting to find out if they would con if they considered it on a specific case basis with your input. I would say that might bode well as maybe something you could use as part of this larger campaign to say, see, you allowed it here. If they come back and deny it, I think it's it's going to give you some idea of what you're going to be up for in terms of the larger campaign. Yeah, but we would need to take pictures, the length of time the. Uh uh, project is done so that we would have a good uh, some science to back up our uh, right yeah we started that opinion. conversation yeah and, yeah, and I've, I've currently I've, pulled applications and I'm working to, to get yes. a whole and bunch I've, of them set up so right. then we can go back to the right. Army is this something that you need to have done well soon, or is like, I, like that, I said to like, James we don't want to end up in a situation where we're hung out like for the next year um, but if it's something that if if you are able to give us a letter for this, I could send that back. I could make the inquiry, and let's see what they say. All right, I think if, we should try that. If they say no, 
we're no worse off than we are here, and maybe here we have to implore you to approve it at four while you continue to work on something else. But if they say it's okay here, then you know we're able to satisfy your request. All right, I think we should try that. Do you have to let her? Um, I mean, what's more than just a permit that says that it's why they gave the 2.5 feet because of? I, like, I think it right? would just be to support the language in your to point out that your blue book states it's for unless otherwise okay. specified, yes. and to say here that you're using open great decking. Yes. And you have found that that allows vegetation you know, the, the to vegetation grow. Adequately. grow yes. And you're requesting that we make that change here. Yep. And then I could go back to the Army Corps. And at least give it, it would be the first shot over the bow anyway, mm -hmm. and see if, you know, because again, this is not a, a, your request is not objectionable to us. It's just the difficulty of, of manifesting with the other agency. Do you think it would be helpful if the letter were backed up with pictures? The same oh, sure. Time? I mean, anything you want to give yes, me. Okay. Um, and I said to James that we may have a couple that I can think of that Correct. you permitted and was built. I mean, I remember going back to a site in Sag Harbor where the alternate floor was growing mm. up through the catwalk. Far Pond is another one that we did a couple walkways across the uh, yeah. grass any, and wetlands. Any uh, examples you can give us would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I, I've yeah. already spoke yeah. with him uh, yep. earlier today right. about getting those. Uh, you know, applications over to me so I can pull the permits because right now I would I literally have to go through all the permits and see if there was a catwalk at okay. 2.5 feet of water. Like, so on the other two points, a lot of um, one was just a question of the length. Uh, there was a, a request, could we pull the, the catwalk back 10 feet? Um, again, here I would ask that you allow us to go at the length we propose because, again, you're looking at mean lower low water depths. So you're, if you pulled this back 10 feet, your catwalk's going to be ending shy of mean low or low. It'll be dry? On, yeah. Up, well, at, at mean low, low tide, it would yeah. be. And with the, ten, with the full 10 feet that we show, we're dead on in, the pier in terms of the pier line. Okay. That's, so okay. if you can work with us on that, I'd appreciate it. And the only other question, the question I had has nothing to really do with the design. It was just an, a request that we put on a note on the plans that the trustee approval is only for the area of the project within jurisdiction and is only a portion of the project. But I didn't understand that because normally if you have a dock that's within your jurisdiction, you guys approve the whole dock. You don't approve like a half a dock. So I just wanted to make sure I understood what that request was about. I think that sometimes these things stretch well landward of the mm -hmm. mean high watermark. And I think that uh, yeah. Council wanted to be able to let the conservation board weigh in on the on the part that's uh, in their jurisdiction and outside of ours. I think is what that thought process. So if you had a walkway, f you know, connected from the house all the way down to the dock, right? It goes into us, out of us, into the conservation, into the town. Okay. So like doing. here, so we go from we don't actually make it to the to the house. The house is elevated, but we start at the edge of the buffer and come down. Wouldn't the board issue a permit for the entire dock? I mean, I've never seen the board we, segment we, the permit before. We have done that, but in the villages. Uh, in the villages, yes, but this is here we're in the town. It's not in the. I mean, it's in West Hampton, but it's a 900 district, Southampton town. It's, it's not. It's not in the village. No, I mean we have uh, issued uh, dock, uh, docks that went up above our jurisdiction, but they start at the water. That's how we right, get exactly. around it. Yeah, that's the reason for that is to make sure that they have uh, not treated lumber in them. That was the biggest right. reason that the reason we had taken. It. How much beyond our jur or upland is is the proposed project? Well, I would say easily two thirds of the walkway is landward of Main High Water, but it's all one structure. Structure, yeah. right? I mean, historically, we have done it. I mean, that's right. I think it was just so that there would be proper consideration paid to the conservation board's concerns, and that you know, that we wasn't jurisdiction. But is that something you need me to do? I mean, in connection with, I mean, I would, I've never. I they just know want, I, uh, you know, they don't want. My understanding is they don't want uh, the applicants to piggyback off of allowing other permits that right. may be in the jurisdiction attached to that walkway um, to be used against them and say, oh, well, the trustees gave a permit for this dock. Like if we added a I want this deck, which there. is in the same jurisdiction right. yeah, as that dock it. was. No. We don't want that, and that's why I think you guys were 
were hesitant and the council was hesitant about allowing to go into that jurisdiction with the extending of the dock. This is something that we should approach Marty on just for his uh, input? I think in the past what, what the trustees were doing, we're talking with Marty and saying, hey, it's a four foot catwalk, it meets regulations, no yeah. treated lumber, and he was fine with it. So I think we, we kind of got away with that, got away from that. So I, I don't know. I think we should have a conversation just to make sure everybody's on the same yeah, it's page. Complimentary it's complimentary it, might, it might even just be, you know, uh, like how the zoning board does with you. They send you the application Referrals. and yeah. then yeah. they give a referral. Yeah. And if it's just the catwalk, he doesn't have any problems with that. So he'll yeah. refer that. Yeah, it's there's, nothing, there's nothing else that we're coattailing yeah. into this because yeah. we've already gone through an extensive permitting process with the conservation board for the house. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Guys, thank you. And thank you for hearing me. That's a huge help to me today. me with Billy though that's a problem we're gonna hold that right? yeah yeah okay. yes yeah you're I'm gonna you're gonna get back to me on uh, the letter. letters. letters right the letter yep. for the Army Corps yes and, 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 have them in so we can and I'll see if there's something I can give you to help with that yes right? and you'll we'll also have a conversation with Marty and Ann. maybe I you can just follow up with me and let me know if there's anything else in that regard I need okay. to do mm -hmm. all right thanks again guys appreciate it Love. Thanks, Rob. All right. Now you want me to go? Yes. All right. Back to Michael and Sunday Shermont. Thank you very much. Billy Mac, Mac, First Coastal. This is. Let me introduce it, Billy. Sure. It's a, it's a, a pretty straightforward. I think it's just under 30 feet. We construct in place approximately 29. Yeah. Existing bulkhead using vinyl sheathing, increased top elevation of bulkhead by 18 inches, place approximately 20 cubic yards clean sand, backfill landward of reconstructed bulkhead, new four foot by 29 foot walkway, landward of the bulkhead, use open grade decking for the walkway and establish a 10 foot wide non fertilization <coughs> buffer sand splash apron landward of bulkhead, no treated wood to be used. Blue Book okay. Client James. Mm -hmm. We'll move it ahead. What yeah. side? Well, how how high are the neighbors? It's going up eighteen uh, inches. The neighbor to the uh, north is a little higher, and um, the neighbor to the uh, south is relatively new. I think he's about six inches high. So this this bulk is one of the few that hasn't been uh, repaired in a long time. You Actually, know. it looks like somebody repaired it back in the eighties. I should say. Um, how high are you going? We're going up to eighteen inches if we can. Eighteen. So what are you going to do with the neighbors? Where you got? So you're going to be 12 inches on one side, and how high are you going to be on the other side? Uh, probably about 12 inches on the other, maybe a so little bit less. What are you going to do with them? Yeah, well, you see, see the neighbor in this in this case here, the neighbor is completely in violation. The neighbor has taken the liberty to completely concrete the entire area. Yeah. yeah. So he's basically, you know. Well, this is a situation where an 18-inch elevation would be appropriate because a fetch of water. It's basically from the Concord Bridge to this property in southeast of Lee Wind. Um, it gets terribly rough there. It gets terribly overtopped. It, during Sandy, there was about three feet of water. Looks like he property. raised it. He already raised it six inches before. Yeah, that's south. That's the uh, the north one, right? Yeah. This is this is um, Sunday's property right here. The one with the boat. Yes. So it looks like she raised it once already. It looked like somebody had done that. Uh, with railroad ties exactly. a long time ago. So you're going 18 inches above that or 18 inches off the, the original bulk uh, 18 inches above that. So you're going 24 inches. Well, no, that, you know, that repair is is part of the structural uh, part of the bulkhead. So we're going right up to that. We're going from that 18 inches up, up to 18 inches up. So one. it's going to be how much higher than the two neighboring properties? So the guy on the north, um, I think he's he's definitely higher. Um, so I think we're. Can you get the Zach? Can you get the Zach um, height of the the one on either side? We can. You want to sure. It's like this guy. Both of his dock all together. He might not have that. Billy, we already know about this. This has been an ongoing issue. Sure. I think I think Rich is already aware of it. We okay. just working yeah. on this. Yes, it's a. It's an ongoing problem since Thank you. Justice Court. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. So we gonna hold this? Uh, we have 
that's next to next to the Oh, I see. I, I, I'd love it to go forward. It, it seems pretty straightforward, uh, but it's up to you guys. I would like to know the height of either one, either side. Can you give us the height of the bulkhead that's north Sundays and this yes. one at high mean high water, and then the elevation on top of that? Sure. So we have a standard, so we know how high the water is at mean high water, and then we can have some kind of standard above that. Okay. Then we could calculate. I can probably get that updated to you before Friday. I'm about that. <laughs> Let's not rush to that. Okay. No, that's okay. Billy. I'll just throw it. Yeah, I'm just throwing uh, it back. I think we have a couple of requests here, and I think we want to get this one right because. Okay. This yeah. is an open bay front where uh, wave energy is not dispersed through a marsh, marsh system. It gets very rough there. Okay. All right. The next one uh, is 23 Old Point Road, LLC. Uh, this one, you were before us last session. Correct. And um, we asked you to make some modification or changes. Yes. To this. Mm -hmm. So reconstruct 218 feet bulkhead in place using vinyl sheeting, increase Top elevation by 18, construct two new bulkhead returns at 20 foot each, place 100 cubic yards, clean sand, backfill in with a bulkhead, establish 10 foot wide gravel buffer, splash apron fertilization or mowing of 10 foot wide buffer will be prohibited. And a new four by 20 ramp to a six by 20 float um, with a couple of eight inch securing piles, no treated wood to be used. Did he satisfy everything that the board requested from the last uh, yeah, discussion? Yeah. Uh, redid the plans with the buffer and the no mow zone as requested by the trustees. And so that should be it then. Okay. With that, we'll move it ahead. We did exactly what we asked. All right. Thank okay. you. So this one. While you're sit, sitting there, can we do the rest of them? And you want them to come back up? Which? What, what do you want to do? You want to? Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. want, if he's here, we may as well have bang all the uh, first coastals right out. We all good with that? Mm -hmm. Fine. And is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. So 24 Holly. 24 Holly is um, similar dock application. Install a 3 by 12 ramp, 6 by 20 float ramp to be attached to bulkhead, untreated wood only to be used. Um, he got a um, bulkhead permit last time. This is just for a uh, Bulkhead permit closed out now. Um, so now he's just in for the ramp and the, and the float. So yep. Detox. Uh, Compliant to whatever we need. Yeah, it doesn't come off. Uh, the bar doesn't block any uh, access or anything. So yeah, we got the depth. That's what I was just checking was the depth. Yeah. It's tough with Mecox because Mecox is not tidal, so it's like. Eh. Uh, yeah. But yes, he has he has plenty of water. I think we're three yes. three and a half feet, three seven, and up to three nine for where the boat would be. So it, it seems like there's adequate depth. Okay. All right. Is that it? You move ahead then. I'd like to. Okay, mm -hmm. move it ahead. You good? Yes. Um, yeah, there we go. We've got one more. You got everything? 277 Surfside. That's a renewal. Yep, it's a first renewal. Nothing's changed. Construct 4 by 80 fixed uh, dock supported by 24 uh, pylons, a 4 by 6 ramp attached landward end of the aforesaid dock, 6 by 6 fixed platform supported by 4 by 4 pylons. Four by three steps uh, to grade for shoreline access at test seaward and all planking will be comprised of 60 percent open grade decking material all timber would be used be untreated tropical wood all fast will be hot dipped and galvanized this is just the first renewal okay. nothing's changed all right we'll move it ahead move it ahead please okay thank you very much one more one you got one point road Okay, 16 point road, um, 116 point road um, is construct new 4x20 dock with 3x12 ramp, 6x20 float, um, 6 inch float securing piles, and 
uh, two six inch mooring piles. It's Rich's Bay, open grate decking, um, untreated wood. Um, it's Rich's Bay and the water depth there. Billy? Was yeah, we're, we're 2.78 uh, at the edge of the, um, at the edge of the plate. So we have enough water? Yep. Um, and we kept it minimal, it's only 36 feet away from the bulk. And it's seasonal ramp and seasonal float. Which would be stored on the upland, correct? Correct. Uh, the one thing, I don't think it's a big deal, but just when I was going out to look at it, the, the number on the house is 122, the number on everything else is 116. I don't think that affects, I don't think that affects yeah. us at all. Right no, all our permit and the application is all correct. It's 116 yeah. on, in a uh, governed system, it's all 116 for the okay. tax bill and everything. Yeah. So, so we kept it's just a matter of uh, the house must be. I, it's I think they must have changed it a long yep. time ago, and yep. the owners haven't caught up with that. Are you guys okay with that? Yes. I'd like to advance it, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, Billy Rack. See you later. Can I finish mine up? Yeah. I have one for, uh, yes. I got the town of Southampton. Uh, 89 Dune Road, Hampton Bays. Plus or minus 580 feet east of Mermaid Lane. It's a renewal, undertake 10 year maintenance dredging activities utilizing hydraulic excavator or clamshell bucket dredge uh, in order to remove approximately 650 cubic yards of clean, compatible beach sand to a depth of three feet below mean low water in the eastern portion of the Tiana Bayside Park facility. Dredge material will be placed approximately 20 feet landward of tidal wetlands for the purpose of dewatering upon completion of dewatering. Stockpiled material will be used to undertake beach restoration and renourishment activities by burying the existing Gabion riprap along 375 linear feet of the bathing beach in accordance with the Tiana Bayside Beach Maintenance Dredge Plan prepared by Mr. Vincent Godiello, October 31st, 2016, and revised uh, March 6, 2017. So this is a renewal of that permit. The swimming area? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I just recommend What's approval. So we'll, we'll move it yeah, in. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Waive so any fees in, are well, incorporated? Well, there's it? no fees indicated yep. here. Yeah, they've okay. already been waived. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So then I just have a discussion on, but I'll need the controller for that. So, Bill, you have a uh, step side. Yes. Stephanie would like to come up. This is Justin Barbara Gubbins, 40B Island Creek Road. Um, I'll let you describe this project. To us. So this is on um, a vacant parcel that um, my clients own the house that's located across the street from here. They purchased this property specifically for uh, access to the water. But the project itself, uh, we're proposing uh, it's a four by 320.5 foot fixed dock with 60% open grate decking, uh, supported by 80 to four inch round pilings uh, with a, no, there is no ramp. What am I talking about here? Well, yeah, there's a ramp, a ramp on the one side, yeah, to access it on the landward side and then a four by four, four foot by three foot set of steps. Mm -hmm. Uh, to access the water on the seaward end, similar to the Hayward property uh, just to the west of this, which my office also did the permits for. Um, it's kind of a tough project simply because there's a tidal creek that runs through this property. I've spoken to the Department of State uh, yesterday who had a lot of comments about it. Uh, I. Um, told them that I would be speaking with this board today and would be seeking your advice uh, as to how we could make this project better. Right now, we're showing it basically at the standard 26-inch uh, clearance.
from the top of the water, uh, 30 inches, actually 30 inches, over the um, marsh primarily, down to 26 mm -hmm. over uh, the high water mark at the end. So um, the problem is that this property is, well, it's vegetated up to the wetland boundary, which I flagged. Um, it's primarily all marsh vegetation. And then you have this tidal creek that has significant mussel beds uh, in it. And uh, at low tide in the creek, there's pretty much no, no water at all. Uh, so I'm here seeking your advice on how I can make this better. Well. Everyone has the right to get access to the water from their property. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't, but it, if the environmental does not does not let you do it, I think this property is a very tough property to do it, and um, unless you come up with a different type of plan, I don't see this myself uh, want to push this project forward. Uh, I've been down to the property several times, and I've been in front of it with a boat, and I just, you know, it's it's too many environmental things you, you're going against. If you only went over the creek bed one time, if it was a drainage ditch dug for mosquitoes years ago, but it's not. Um, you got fish going up and down there, you got birds, you got probably bait, baymen going up there catching bait in the springtime. Um, there's too many things you're going to disturb by putting a dock over that wetlands. I mean, maybe you can talk to the neighbors, push it over on the side of the neighbors. I mean, the kind of land trust, I think, owns over the... Well, that was one of the things I was actually going to mention, is that, you know, typically this board is looking for a 10-foot setback off of the property line, so that's what we're proposing. But this property to the east is technically, I believe it's either got an easement or it's been given to the Peconic Land Trust or Nature Conservancy. I'm not quite sure. No, it's, it's, it's one it's or something. the other. It's something uh, of that. Yeah, yeah. Would they be able to swap nature. properties? Then you'd be able to acquire yeah. not, you know, my thought is you, being a fisherman and, and familiar with this area and fishing up there, you're going to get completely limited access to the half of this creek where baymen do make a living and um, change the whole characteristic uh, characteristics of the area. There's egrets and herring and a lot of uh, birds up there that feed and you know that make this their uh, home. So by putting a very long structure like that, it's going to completely change the characteristic of the er characteristics of the area. Well, I had a couple well, a few thoughts that I had was one to either push it all the way to either to the property line or couple of feet mm -hmm. off of the property line. The other thought that I had was to put it uh, 10 feet off of the western property line but shorten it significantly and end it at the creek but then there'd be almost no water at low tide. Uh, I have not mentioned any of this to my client yet. I'm basically here bouncing my ideas off of you to kind of see what. What do they want to do? They're looking for basically access for, to throw a kayak in the water. So, um, and that's basically what we did with the, the neighbor to the west. Uh, so with that neighbor, it was pretty much no brainer because they have the tidal creek on that, their property as well. So we just pushed it to the other side. Can you talk to the neighbor? To the, because that would be the south. Well, it's, it would be the, the east. Yeah, the east. That's the, or the nature conservative, but moving it way over there. Moving it as close to this property line as possible. Yeah, it would yeah, still cross the creek, cross though. The creek, That's the yeah. problem. Actually, put what it right on their property. Maybe you can swap properties or let them have an easement. Give them. That sounds like a legal disaster. To well, me. I mean, <laughs> putting what something, putting a structure, putting a structure like that, <laughs> yeah, you're completely changing the whole dynamics of the yeah. area, and. Uh, I wouldn't be in favor of it as what, it's proposed. What if you were to roll it back and just have it end at the beginning of the tidal creek? Is that is that so that is this soft part so that it was here. a so you can't walk a no, short more, walkway? Or this is all muck. And it would only be accessible via high tide. 
perhaps? So that's where I'm thinking if I was to switch the side of the property so it could be at least longer and perhaps at least get down to this point so I could maybe put it into at the high water mark. It would only be usable at high tide. Yeah, because you can't step Because there place. is very little water there. Yeah, it's all mud. And, and it's mud. I mean, literally, you'll sink up to your... Yeah. I'd, still but in my I'd still only suggest going to the closest point of the tidal creek. I wouldn't, you know, the less intrusive, the better for that property. Because um, um, you're, you're interfering too much with the environment. Right. So to here, that's what you're saying. Yeah, James, right? yeah. yeah. Because okay. where were you saying, Daphne? Well, I was saying to down. locate it up on this side and go along here to about this point. So you'd get a little bit further out. So maybe it wouldn't have to be completely high tide for you to get further in. The, in there is no change in water depth. No. No. It's flat. Right. It's and flat. if you're not Marsh. getting the, the change in water depth, if you're in the no top of the tidal creek, then. There's no sense of yes. uh, you know destroying wetlands to put pilings in to get to because you know again yeah because when we did this one we put this one way over on our edge to get away from this right yes and you know obviously that. as I said before nobody wants to it's, build a 300 foot long something. structure right. if they don't have to it's a lot of effort there's to watch a little yeah, right yeah. Yeah. it's a matter yeah. of yeah. This is all soft. This is all what wash. will work and in my discussion yeah, with uh, right Tara course. Stern yeah. from the Department of State yeah. yesterday she she kind of was more in favor of keeping it on this side of the property and trying to minimize disturbance as much as possible she had insinuated uh, a bridge of some form or Obviously, I've not heard at all from the Army Corps on this, and they're more than likely, since it is sensitive in nature, going to say they're going to want this four feet elevated. Uh, four and a half. It's going to. It, that's what they're going to want. You know, aesthetically, it's going to look terrible, and it's still going to degrade the uh, environment there. Should Putting they, any kind of structure there. Sure, they want to do this to launch a kayak. It sounds like a lot of, you know. So. Uh, I mean, they can walk to the end of the street and launch it there. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of So that, I mean, what you were saying of maybe just going to this point of the high water mark here is. I think the bare minimum, I think that's, you know, if, if anything. Otherwise, I still don't even see, you know. There's no reason. You're not, you're not, I mean, the only time, like Ann said, your only time you're going to be able to get a kayak in here is at high tide. Um, so even that's like <coughs> maybe that's all well that they really want. So might as well keep the lot it's still clear seventy feet. Go down the from street the wetland boundary around. to but. the high water mark. So I mean, realistically, we only take very little jurisdiction. This is something if you're going to start that far up, Marty would have to be uh, involved. Uh, involved in. Well, yeah. Because what do you I mean? mean? I'm confused. Well, the trustees start only have high far? water mark. Start that far. Where's the mean high water mark? The mean high water starts at the tidal creek here. So every basically, ninety percent of the structure that you're proposing would be in Marty's jurisdiction. Correct. Right. Because it would be from the wetlands. Yep. Seaward. Yeah. So the trustees have jurisdiction from the mean high water seaward. Yep. Which was pretty much just this creek. Even this section here is technically not trustees' jurisdiction. It's the tidal creek. So, any work above here is is conservation board. And since it's only, it would only be a staircase here. Yeah, it would be you know. If it's like ninety percent of it, would it be out of our, just, you know, our jurisdiction. Conservation board jurisdiction. That does not sound good. Yes, it does. You want to hold it? No, it doesn't. This way we get the uh, proper agencies to uh, get a determination, right, Jim? Yeah. What were the other suggestions from the state yesterday? You said three. <coughs> uh, well, the Department of State, because I had asked her about relocating <coughs> it to this side and, and doing what I had suggested about shortening it down to the high water mark here, and she had thought that that would be um, him, more disruptive she liked it uh, she actually wanted me to keep it on this side but potentially do something higher than normal over the creek and try to minimize she wanted a count of how many pilings would have to go through the actual creek 
Uh, so I kind of calculated that because it's it's kind of all. here. All. Um, yeah. But she wanted to basically know the outcome of my discussion with this board. Uh, the DEC, to my knowledge, uh, I spoke with Danielle Stango Torre there today, and she said that it was in review with the Habitat Department, and that she was not aware if they had actually gone out to the property. I'm sure that they will pretty much be of the same opinion. I can't imagine that they wouldn't be. Um, I, like I said, I have not yet spoken with my client on any of this, but I really just wanted some feedback from you as to your feelings. Um, but I understand min minimizing is obviously best. That's a really special spot over there in Savannah Creek. So the less, the better. Um, you got your comments. So we'll put that on hold. Yes. Okay. But if that is in fact true that you would have really jurisdiction over merely a staircase, yeah. then uh, that is kind of scary to me. All right. We're going to have to have some conversations, so we're not going to be able to. You know, you're going to have to talk to your clients. We're going to yeah. have to take a look at this on the jurisdiction side. So, for the mean high water mark, see right. what is ours for the mean high water mark. Right. So we're going to have to talk to we're going to have to talk to the environment division. Yep. Yeah. Mm. That does not sound like fun. Okay. All right. Um. Who follows up with Marty? Do you? Yeah, Bill? Billy, 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 Billy. I'll ask Marty. Yeah. Billy, have a conversation. Yes. Okay. I think so, I already spoke to him once. All right. On hold. Yeah. We, we have because I. You got one more with you? I got one more. It's another fun one. I seem to only have fun ones. So. We do have second story LLC. Yeah, the comptroller is here. We should let the comptroller give his. Uh, I don't want to tie him up. I know people want to go home. This is the last one I got. Okay. Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> uh, Construct a 4x80 fixed dock supported by 24 inch pylons, 4x6 ramp. That's Lambert and Facet dock, 6x6 platform, supported by 4x4 pylons, 4x3 steps, graded shoreline, attached seaward. All planking should be comprised of 60% open grade decking material, non treated hot dip galvanized. This is over North Haven. And it's 26 inches above Poles Creek, but we had one about two weeks ago. We discussed it was four foot up. We asked them to lower it. Okay. This is a completely different one. Okay. This one is at the elevation we want it to be. Same creek. Okay. Yeah, this is. Uh, I, they're just doing a staircase and right. a small deck. So, All right. or dock. Sorry. So I'd like to see it go forward. So um, the only problem is that I got preliminary uh, comments from Army Corps and they're asking me to raise it to four feet. So I don't know what to do with that. Come take a hike. I mean. It's not a waterway. Right. Because think you're in it as a kayak. But it's all marsh vegetation, so they want it. They so want this, is, this is the perpetual problem that, as you've heard, from anyone that yes. is coming that, you know, they see vegetation, they want it raised. So we're, we're, we're I don't we're know what to do with that. Well, we could try the same thing that we were talking about with the other consultant. Do you here. have any projects that were done with light penetrating decking that are less than four feet? Where the vegetation has grown Up and, around it's, it, and, it's, and if, can you please get them over to James with the, the address, the date of the project? And some pictures, right? Because the prior consultant, we're going to be sending a letter, right? We're right? Gonna, request. So we, why don't we do the same thing with this one? Right. You know, we have a grander conversation started, and we're doing a bunch of research and putting together a report substantiating our claim as towards why we want to keep these things lower. lower. But you know, you know, Rob Herman, we were talking about doing this, so we could do the same with this one and see how it goes. Okay, so you're looking for photos of. Yes, yeah, so not even photos. If you if you have any properties that you have issue you've gotten the permits for in the past that you know that are um, 2.5 feet or three feet above the marsh area that clearly shows the light penetrating decking that allows the 
uh, marsh grasses to grow either up through them or underneath them. Uh, let me know so I can pull those permits and then I can do a site visit and take photos of it and we can add it to our... Some photos right, and if you already have that, that's yeah. great. That would help me more. Yes. Um, but we want to present it to the Army Corps and show them, you know, the evidence that the, that the light penetrating decking does work and that they can lower their standards. We'll get to hold this one? Yeah. yeah. We've already started the conversation is what they've requested us. Okay, so we're going to put together the best report that we possibly can to make our case to try and settle this out. We're going to try. Because no. my discussions with them is that this is the only place in the whole United States that doesn't listen to them. All right. <laughs> Well, because, but, but, but to be fair to the town of Southampton, it's yeah. one of the few places that there are in the United States where you still have trustees. Right. So, okay. I understand your right. point of view. Well, I totally agree with what you're trying to do because I don't see the need to have it elevated so high, especially if you're using right. the open great decking. But, and that's the well, there you go. I so, myself have also had. But with the, the document that they did and tested was in Tampa Bay, Puerto Rico. Right. It never was on Long Island and only referenced the Northeast, and that was Massachusetts. So it hasn't taken into consideration our local habitat. And that's, you know, it's a 71-page document that the Army Corps has written, I've looked yeah. at, and it has nothing to do yeah. with Long Island. It may not be I germane mean, to us, so we're gonna make the case of what's germane yeah. to us and show yeah. all the case history that we have, and then right. at least we're taking the best swing. Let's ask Glenn right. to come up. Okay. 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 Thanks, Perfect. Daphne. Thanks, Daphne. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. The glasses are dirty. I will be back. Thank you. We'll be right. here. We got Mr. Len Marchese here, who's our comptroller. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Hey, Len. How are you doing today? Hey, Len. Good. Len. Maybe you can help us out. We got a new member on the board, and it's I think it was around late 2015. I think is when we entered into the agreement with the comptroller yeah. in terms of how we handle our money. We were having a discussion and surrounded some donations that came in for dredging and and how money comes in and where it goes. And I think there was some miscommunication or misunderstanding about our money being coming with the town's money. And I thought it would be good for the board and for everybody to understand, you know how it actually works and how the funds are kept and so forth. If you could just give us a... Well, yeah, currently the trustees have a separate set of bank accounts and they have a separate general ledger and that's all maintained in a separate, total different corporation, you know, uh, accounting system. So it's not commingled whatsoever, but there also is trustee funds that are part of the town money. We have budgeted allocations for the, the trustees in the general fund. Mm -hmm. And that's been that way forever, I guess. So there has always been general fund appropriations for the trustees. And I think you're kind of talking about some type of a dredging project right. or something. We look back actually on some of the records and it looked like um, the trustees wanted to do some projects and the town contracted with the county because we had an overall contract to pay for overtime and uh, that there was, uh, we were reimbursed from the trustees and then we wrote the checks from town accounts to pay the trustees. That wouldn't happen today because now we have the mechanisms to just cut our own checks. So it wasn't, it's not something that would happen now, but that would, that did happen back then. Right. And that's really where we stand with that. Right. So, so in essence, just to get a, a clarification, there was some donations made in 2012 to the tune of $10,850, but there were checks that left in 2014 and 2015 for, you know, one group at $5,355 and 66 cents. Yeah, those are our checks. Those Your are checks, checks. And, then, and then there was another one um, that goes out for $38,452 and 72 cents. Right. Combination uh, of a couple of different dredging invoices that are in line with contracts that the town signed and the trustees signed with the county of Suffolk to pay for overtime. Yeah, and there were resolutions adopted by the town board as well, uh, allocating those. Right, so we, the monies that came in, we spent and sent out to the county, so oh, yeah. we, we don't have any, we don't have any balance of money for donations for, it was paid for. And so we tried to 
do this research. And we did the research, and everything says that the project that was permitted and within the scope of work was completed and expedited to everybody's, you know, what we can find on the documentation. I wasn't on the board in, in that period of time, and we didn't have the arrangement with the comptroller, so. And one question, because it was at the meeting the other night, it, uh, it was proposed to us, that when the money was paid for overtime to the county, it was an accumulative overtime of all the projects that were done for the town of Southampton, correct? That, that's what. Well, yeah, the, we would have to. I think that that's how the contract worked. Yeah. Okay. There was so much time in the summer or yeah. whatever this period is to do the dredging. Yeah. And in order for them to get all the projects done, they needed to work on overtime. So we we agreed to pay this yeah. overtime because so, they paid yeah. this straight time as part of the county costs, and we just yeah. paid the extras. Because uh, some of the uh, uh, members of the yacht club in uh, Bullhead, Bullhead, right, Bill? Um, yeah. Billy belongs to it. He knows the members. And members who, and non-members who live on the water. There. Yeah, they contributed to uh, Billy and uh, the community contributed some money to us to do some overtime, and I've asked your office and the county, and they basically gave us the same answer that it was a combined overtime of the whole entire pool for the town. So, trying to figure out that ten thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars how much of it was used for overtime, we have not been able to get the exact number of overtime hours that the county did specific to that project. That project. So, uh -huh. but, but I don't think that's really germane because if, you're, if you have 107 restricted days, you have to get every project done as quickly as possible. And if you run out of time before you get to an individual project, that's not expedited for them. Well, so in order to get that project done, every, you gotta keep that dredge running. The contract clearly states that was signed for $24,311.28 uh, for eight waterways, okay? Um, no, and, I, no, I understand and, that. And it, looks, it looks like on paper with all of the documentation that the town has and the trustees have and that was sent to the county is that the donations were made and that the no, work was done I, is what I, it looks like. I understand it, but I, you know, we've contacted the county multiple times over this period of time. I do have a call into uh, the Scott Hillary in the county right now, whether they will actually facilitate breaking it down per day over time. I don't think it's gonna happen, but I sent them an email yesterday. I've had multiple phone calls over the last month or so. Uh, so I'm trying to to actually get the exact money if it, if it where it is and how it exists. Because well, that's what I had told. Yeah, we, the, the we only have our uh, invoices from the county. Yeah. We don't have detailed breakdowns of where and when they, yeah. did, you know. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we have cubic yeah. yard dredge amounts that the county has provided to the board, uh, indicating in each year how much, you know, cubic yardage was taken out of the, the creek in question. But, you know, everything in this project has a scope of work that looks like it has been adhered to, and the discussion is outside of that scope of work. Um, yeah, when you had the meeting with uh, uh, Eric and Fred and uh, Billy Clare, and what was this exactly, how did it, you know, because my understanding, and this is what I've done is for overtime, was it specific to a uh, an area, or was it just because the county had was multiple... It was supposed to be outside the um, scope of their permit, and they had amended the permit to dredge there. Okay. And the permit was never amended, and you mentioned on that... They told you that they dredged it without a permit. Well, they dredged the they dredged where they were supposed to because I have I have the schematics of the uh, dredge. That's yeah, we we, we so. have all the stuff. I all right. I, this whole thing needs to needs to get um, you know because now we're in a situation where we have people that are looking for their money back. Yeah. And I don't know. We don't have their money because we gave their money to the county. Well, the only way we could ever find this out is ask uh, the county comes up with a specific. Seven days it dredged, what overtime was done on that project, and that's the only way I could pull it all back. But I think, as, as Scott is indicating, if you weren't ever going to get to that project, if you didn't complete projects one, two, and three first, then you wouldn't have even gotten to that project, right? Right. right. They would have had no dredging, and that's not no dredging. Okay, so. Right. If so they had dredge, you wouldn't have been there. 
Okay. Exactly. So basically, money so got in order used. to get to you. You had to get the other ones expedited so that we can get to you before the season shuts down. So that money actually worked to expedite. Exactly. Even though it wasn't specifically, even if it did, because maybe by the end they didn't have to work overtime because they were the last project. Okay. And you didn't need as much time. All right. Okay. They could have actually been. I mean, you yeah. know, you don't. Yeah. Know. I I don't know because I wasn't on the dredge and none of us were on the dredge and we were we were trying to but answer this. Well, the fact is though, we spent much more than that donation yes. on overtime, so yeah. it had to go to somebody's project. Yes. Right, and it, and in order to fit it into 107 days, you have to get it done. Okay. So if if you know if if these other people, all right, this contract was for all the you know it was like eight or nine different waterways. You know, there was no. There was no initiative taken to amend any permits by anybody here. So we're trying to make heads or tails. We're talking about, you know, basically taxpayers' money at this point in time that was entrusted to the trustees. And it looks to me, just based on the records that we have and the permits and the signed contracts, that there was substantially more money paid to the county for the purpose of overtime. For the purposes of overtime than than was collected. I mean you know, well, the only way I'm going to get an answer is if the county gives me their, their, their answer. And I don't but I don't think that. Don't you think Len already answered the question? Uh, yes. For I, I wasn't there. I wasn't a trustee at the time. And there's not too good of a paper trail. But what he just summed up for me, that the money was spent. Okay. What exactly is the question? Well, they're asking Got for lost somewhere in the line. They're of, asking for their money back. And there was a there was they, some they intonation that, that, that they, they, yes. they, they, they really don't want the money back. They want the project to be done. The project was never done. The, um, Ed was on the on the board at that the project time. Was, uh, that's the, it was supposed to be dredged outside of the north of the red and green buoy as you come in. There's a little hump there. It's still there, and um, well, there's deep this. water. There's a hump. Then you have the channel. And if they dredged another 60 feet, um, would have got past. The hump into the deeper water. Okay, the hump is never. They never went out there. Then they. Then Ed mentioned that he spoke to the county, and the county did it. Did it without a permit. They never got the permit. That's what it was never done in 2012 because they did not have a permit. They were supposed to get the permit. They never did. And then Ed kept on asking them, and and they again. They he said, said it they was done. It, it done without a permit. Now, if, they, if it was done without a permit, then why did we get permits if they can dredge without a permit? That's what I don't understand. The permit was that's what, Billy, I wasn't on the judge. Yeah. That's what I'm that's trying to so tell you. I, yeah, I'm, no, I'm not saying I'm that. just asking I'm just the saying question. You, what you told me. That's and, what. Um, you, 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 everyone keeps on thinking, thinking that it's supposed to be the channel was dredged. They can they dredged the channel, okay? What the money was for was outside. It's like, here's the buoys. They were supposed to dredge out here. That was, what was they never did it. They never got the permit. There's no contract, no permit, and it's not in any scope of work that we can find in the documentation. And folks are are accusing, yeah. Here's here's the channels, right? Yes. Here's the here's the contract, and here's the permit. You know, here's the depth of the excavation. Here's everything that was attached to and allowable. That's why they were supposed to amend the permit. They but in no, in 2012, no one's taken any initiative to amend a permit. We're almost in 2019. The county was supposed to do it. Well, but still, if the trustees control the priority dredge list, yeah. then somebody has to take an initiative to do this all we did, it's up to the county to amend it we asked for the work to be done the county goes into after our survey showing any high spots then the county goes and does the dredging after they do their surveys all right so you know what it is is that we have people that seem to be you know upset that we have their money we don't have their money we, we've we paid money to the county for expedited overtime dredging for did mm -hmm. you know for Sabonic Creek, did this? Did these dredging projects benefit this group? All right. So they're Thanks not asking on. for money back. They want the project done. They want. So they, they don't care about the money. They care about getting the project done so All they right. get the boats in and out. So well, can, we've can given them a bunch of soundings this year, which is far beyond the scope of work that can be done so. in a short dredge. So thank you, Len. Thanks, thank you, Len. Len. Let me. All right. Let's roll. Let's keep rolling on this. Uh, are we done with the application? We've got one more application. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's a renewal. Okay. It's a renewal. Um, Todd Cohen, 31 Holmans Avenue, Puyog. Um It is a renewal to change 4x4 four by, four by 16 support piles to 8x20 foot green heart piles from Mean High Water Seaward. 
and to make a seasonal dock structure a fixed structure. So it's a renewal. I'd like to. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Okay, let's move it ahead then. All right. Lee, would you like to come and discuss? I've got uh, one other person, Kim, behind you. Hello. Good afternoon. Thanks, Jess. I'll amend your agenda. I'm here as a person, not as the deputy mayor, so make sure that's corrected. I just want to come and talk to you guys. Okay. As a resident of Sagopana, a resident of Sagopana, I had absolutely no, you know, nobody in the board knows I'm here. <laughs> so I want to make that very clear. Keep it a secret. Um, and the reason for it being that the impetus actually was that the SAG pond was was opened what two months ago no 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 end of uh end of, end august, of august right of august. Um, and being there and watching it and then seeing what happened as a consequence it just got me just thinking about this because you can see the reason for it not flowing right and the variation on the beach and then just thinking about this more thoroughly for the next, what, month almost has it been? Do I recognize that Sag Pond has become more and more shallow? And here you're talking about dredging. I actually went to the Thayers to see if Dick Thayer still had his dredge, but no, they sold it. Um, the, um, the one question that I can ask you that maybe you can answer is when the beach nourishment took place, did they um, stop putting sand at the mouth of Sag Pond and then just keep putting sand elsewhere? Or did they just I think they weren't right cut, did they just raise the beach and then some of the area? I, and I the think they raised the whole entire yeah, were, plane right of the, the beach, beach all the way from east to west. Right, so there was never any, there was, there was never any. The project addition. didn't stop yeah. and start. No. And I, didn't he, think and I don't did think it either. started and stopped in the front of Maycox either. I think it kind of like. Went right just, along. And, right. and, and, and if it didn't, the littoral drift yeah. did it for them. Okay. Um, the reason being that it's just like observation, which of course you guys are looking at everything as best you can, trying to figure out the predicament that we're in, is that the sand that's even mounded up on the, it would be the east side, as the various times they've, they've dug out the pond just, just flows right back in. The ocean takes it in and it's become more and more shallow farther and farther out. So even as you try to open Sag Pond, you're never getting the cut that used to be the case because Sag Pond you mean would come up to the- it's shallow on the ocean side. It's shallow in the pond. Yeah, yeah. And the the pond is- uh, Yeah, on the ocean side. I'm sorry, I keep thinking, yeah, right. It is a long pond. Yeah. So can we dredge Sag Pond? I thought that was over dredge, wasn't it? It We're was. Because I remember standing on the pipes. That's a huge. We don't even have a permit for that, do we? Yeah, I'd have to look to see if the uh, if the permit, how far in the permit, uh, yeah, yeah. allows you mine. to dredge. Yeah. Well, I mean, we mined sand out of there and basically took it out of the pond and put it on the beach mm -hmm. for the homeowners, and then it ends up. But as far as doing an actual dredging, that would be. I mean, first of all, the cost of it would be probably half of a million dollars just knowing dredging projects or more yeah. and uh, getting a dredge in there would be logist a logistic nightmare too. I mean, I don't yeah. think the DEC is going to allow you to just dredge a pond. And but you do well, understand they, they, the reason that I'm yeah. asking this, right? Because Sag Pond at one time was very much deeper and, and the flow then back from the swamp was very much more what would you call it? Center. Yeah, we'll go it would. It would have. It exchange. would be more extreme, yeah. by virtue of the water actually coursing through. When they dug the pond, it would. You'd, it would be almost a trickle at the. It would be the north end because it would drain. Would this dredging have taken place in like 1962 after the Ash Wednesday storm? Because I know they dredged Mecox, the town. No, this would have been even earlier than that. Because I was just a kid. Yeah, see, that was a, because it, it was, was after the hurricanes, I think. Okay. After Donna, Carol, because uh, Sag Pond was filled with 50s sand. And, like the fifth, early 50s, 60s, yeah. I, think yeah. So. I mean, how this did, is. 
How did it used to be done then? You mentioned that an individual. Well, Dick Thayer had a he had a dredge. Dick Thayer lived just down the road, and he yeah. had a dredge, and he was dredging a lot of the small inland waterways. That was his business. Yeah. And I asked his daughter the other day, and she said, "No, no, no, that was sold to a Mister, some guy in Sag Harbor, and I'm not sure that he even can't think of his name now. Sorry." Um, it's just a thought, just a thought, and uh, given circumstances and how things are managed and I realize that you guys are doing now a management uh, plan. For, well, plan. We're, 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 in the, right. we're in the process of trying to finalize it for yeah. our public here. It's very yeah. close. Yeah. Oh, it's that close. Oh, yes, right. That, yes. Okay. And you are aware of the discussion that's going to happen on Saturday no, at no. Bridge Gardens? Nope. That's just so interesting to me. Gobler is going to be there. Um, I'll get you the information. Not that you want to attend, but could you nice. send it off to James? Yeah. Sure. And Anybody then we can the disperse it. Sure, absolutely. Well, well, just sorry. talking about Dick Thayer, he would dredge Cobb Isle, uh, Channel Pond, uh, Burnett's Creek, um, Hayground, Sam's Creek. Yeah. These are all bodies of water in Mecox where, when the water is extremely low, they basically neck off and they're not connected. At Higher Bay, yeah. they're connected. And we haven't done dredging projects like that, I think, prior to me being on the board. Right. I mean, it was, I'm going back probably 20 years or more. Yeah. But they were readily done around Mecox to keep the uh, yeah. upper water bodies connected to Mecox. Right, right, right. And I don't believe there was ever any permits gotten from any of the other agencies back then no nope. because there was no, no really there was no the different world it, there was Absolutely. no they weren't even existing in right. existence then but now that we've gotten the army corps dec and department of state we have a lot of not paperwork to push through right right right, right. Mm -hmm. okay so that's all right. really all i wanted to talk to you okay. thank you Kind of sit here. That's okay. This is interesting to me. Um, do I have to put my name in this? Yes. Name, okay. email, and give the information to James over there. So and uh, or get his information so you can contact him about what's going to happen with Mr. Goldberg. Right. Um, do I have to put my name now. I guess. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, really. And and now are you leaving? You guys? No, are we have. Now we got one more, and I think you got another. Yeah. Oh, really? We have a little more discussion. Yeah, we have a discussion. Uh, Kimberly Barber is going to discuss uh, <laughs> small scale oyster uh, bed planting and clam seeding in Tyana Bay. Right. Folks, this is where I have to leave. All right. I have a flood at home that I have to deal with. Okay. All right. Um, Thanks for coming. Yeah. We'll do anything with you. No. We can probably just get yeah, to lay low here. Well, you're the one I was worried about. No, we're all good. All right. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. So we can discuss this, but we're not going to adopt it until Monday's meeting. So we're all good. I'll see we, you then. Yes. Thanks, Rich. All right, here we go. Here's our map. Do you have any more copies? Oh, yes. Sorry. Oh, I gave you one over there. I mean, Bruce is gone. Yeah, Bruce is uh, left. I had GIS draw us up a nice. Oh, great! Even better. Big, big I attempted map to. So we can all share this. That's even better than what I came up with. So good. All right. So um, I had been speaking with Ed about this a little bit, um, but just to brief the rest of the board, I know you've, you've heard all about our whole um, Back to the Bays initiative over the past couple of years. Um, we've been getting a lot of interest and uh, funds coming in to support all these different stewardship sites. Um, we recently got a grant from the Long Island Community Foundation, and they're funding us to start um, two new Back to the Bays stewardship sites, as we call them. Um, which are basically designed to be receiving areas for different habitat and shellfish restoration projects. Um, the idea is there are long-term receiving areas that we could revisit every year. That's when we have our best restoration success. So we're really excited that we um, finally have some resources to hopefully get some work going right in Tiana Bay, because as you're aware, we're um, operating the Tiana Bay side facility in partnership with the Town Parks and Rec uh, Department. And we'd uh, certainly like to increase uh, the community involvement in different projects that we're able to offer staging out of that facility. So 
Um, when we were talking about this project, um, we're looking at putting out some spat on shell oyster reef and additionally doing some hard clam, uh, just free planting as well. So um, I'm here to hopefully get your support of this idea and even better, hopefully delineate um, a receiving area that everyone would be um, happy with seeing this type of work happening at and uh, hopefully continue to revisit it every year, but starting um, this fall with a smaller scale, we have uh, find some place to do 100,000 shellfish altogether. That's gonna be split between the spat on shell oysters and the hard clams. Um, working with Greg on that to uh, divvy up uh, what we have and, and where it's going. So where is um, where is going to go out in here? Um, so we were yeah we were talking about the area east of the facility, right? Yeah, um, I had a discussion with Kim, and she had also some interest in doing some eelgrass planting. Yes. Um, my thought being a good area that's not easily accessible to people because there's a literally about 2,500 feet of very shoal area in every direction except for the channel here would be to do something in the northeast corner where the dug channel is it's the old remnants of an inlet it starts to get deeper here and there's some nice bottom here it's sandy going into some eelgrass it's a little bit deeper and it's far enough away where people aren't going to walk out and you know interfere with it that, that was my my first thought area would be right okay. here you're gonna make that a sanctuary? I would like to make it a sanctuary okay. and just, you know, maybe incorporate it into the uh, Tiana Bay facility and have okay. a designated, whether it's a one acre or two acre area in the northeast corner here, and it's very easily watched over. Um, it's It stays uh, wet all winter, even at very low tides. Um, and it's, you know, it's a good area for people to wait around and to do projects. There's not a lot of uh, sharp uh, rocks and shells there, so I, th I think it would be a really appropriate area to do it. And you also get some very good flushing. You've got the uh, westerly tide that comes from Mar uh, from uh, Quantic Bay and the, the tide that goes through Lanes Island, so you get extremely good water quality and flushing. It's east of the uh, curtain, as uh, Chris Goldler would say, where the bad water quality is. So uh, just, everything just west, yeah. just east of it. So. And you guys have extremely successful shellfish growths over there, correct? Yeah, um, we've been, you know, Greg's been doing stuff for years, but as far as, you know, finally finding a place that we could, you know, generate long-term, you know, funds and resources to doing, I wasn't even necessarily proposing a sanctuary area, but that would obviously be even we better. We the whole thing a sanctuary, we had this, we include this too. Yeah, well, Billy, wherever yeah. it's going to be, we just yeah. designate it out, off and that. then we could, you know, because it's very e easily manageable, and as far as driving down there, and and it's very few, if any, people ever will go there and shellfish and stuff. Yeah, it's from our experience, so far, there, we haven't seen it's so far, and a lot of people who not been great over there, right? Hasn't been too great over there for. There are better clam beds by the bridge, and people I mean, can they go park. further east. Yeah. People can park and walk off from the bridge. That's why and they go further east of that area. Too far to walk. Is this where this? Is this where the eelgrass project was? Kind of uh, east of where the eelgrass project was. We were actually doing last time I was here. Um, we had done some test plantings more on this side of the property by the existing eelgrass on this side. Right. Um, they're actually going out, I think, in a couple of weeks to monitor over there, see how that's going. But right. we could very easily, you know, we've Check seen that. the best success with the eelgrass working on. The edges and kind of doing that grid pattern and then the eelgrass yeah. could just kind of jump uh, over itself and expand that way so we'd love to even yeah put some some test plantings and maybe this fall see how things are going um, on that side of the property as well yeah I just um, because the college had done some uh, not Chris Goba the other professor Peterson Brad Peterson, Brad, yeah. Brad Peterson. Mm -hmm. he had done some long line uh, you know, eelgrass basically hooking the seeds up in the plants on a long yeah, line, yeah, and that way, took the, them out there. with the that's currents, could disperse. And from 1985, when there was very dense eelgrass beds, to the early 90s, where there was literally not a stick of eelgrass, and to where we are now, the eelgrass planting that has been done up here uh, through the college, Department of State, um, the Cornell, and with the trustees, and naturally, it has come back to almost historically where it was back in the 70s yeah, that's what so we it's want to see. <laughs> you know it's it's a wonderful thing it really is to see all of that eelgrass up there and all the habitat that's been created 
Yeah, so I think, you know, it would be even more interesting to, you know, it's not as suitable over there to do oyster reefs. So if we could combine all the different, you know, restoration sites yeah. and have this beautiful compatible uh, habitat and uh, well, receiving. Well, my thought working with the town council and John Bouvier, this site with the money that they're putting in here and the education, this expanded to an actual, uh, like an open bay, uh, you know, like a laboratory, something like that, that with, with you guys, you know, because. You know, it's 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 all public lands, but we can close it off. We closed, you know, portions of uh, Tyana Bay and Wisa Creek to, yeah. you know, for Chris's project, mm -hmm. which I think has been pretty successful. But you guys are all going to well, do a different project and have some different uh, results. results in right. Well, if they if they ever get the legal situation worked out with the state of New York on bringing shellfish in, then there's going to be even more closure in this yeah. entire area. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I want to stress this is a completely different <laughs> project yeah. than that. I know we're it still is. trying to work through all those issues. Yeah, because right. we can't, you know, whatever. They, there was a, a grab to try and close almost the whole thing down, which obviously we can't do. Cause there's oh, a yeah, I mean, that you saw that I think, you know, Chris was here. We've been working closely, you know, with the Bayman Association trying to figure out where best to do it. But I know that there's just legal issues on the taking or closing down or supplying the shelf. Right. Oh, yeah, so they got to gotta work it all out. So, yeah, we're hopeful, you know, that hopefully... Spring and summer, we'll have something resolved. But if not, you know, we'll have a spot to do, you know, stuff from other funding sources. It doesn't so, have to be part James, of the project. James, you want to uh, come up here so I can show you the map where, just to get an idea where, so I get coordinates of the uh, this area. And yeah, no, I, I you got it. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to get it. Yeah, we'll have to go out and maybe GPS it. GPS it. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna. Yeah, I mean, we could we could do that too. We could do it together. However, you want to um, yeah. work that. And the trustees, uh, Bill, Billy's asked for some clamshells. I believe we're going to get either two, three tractor trails worth of crushed clams from uh, what, Rhode Island? Or Rhode Island. Right? Um, so we can use them in projects, uh, putting some clutch into Mecox Bay after we do the dredging and turning the bottom over, and other places within the town with uh, you and the college. Right. So we'll have a nice stockpile, and we can. We're also going to do some parking lots, and you know, try to uh, use a natural clam base, you know, uh, for uh, people to walk on into, uh, you know, even though it hurts their feet. <laughs> But I think it's a good, and it also puts calcium back into the bay, yeah. which is important yeah. for the shellfish to grow. A lot of different uh, benefits, that's for sure. So, yeah, that would be great. We're looking to hopefully expand the work we're doing on site as far as, yeah. you know, shellfish nursery, you know, upland stuff and flubsies and everything. So I think uh, it's just the start of something that we hope to yeah. continue. So soon. what I, what we're going to do on our end here is get the coordinates, okay. uh, then I'll put a We'll put a formalized resolution as the trustees, if everybody's in agreement, closing this area and making it specifically a sanctuary for you know future restoration, working with the uh, tie in the bay facility. Yeah. You guys okay with that? Absolutely. All right. Well, let's Excellent. Even James better. I love that. Thank you. Yes. And um, yeah, so I think we we have spent on show that's just about ready. The clams, I mean, we could do in November. So yeah. you think the time frame for getting the you know coordinates and actual area, everything? Yeah, um, just some advice of putting shellfish over here, especially clams. You want to make it probably the second week of November. Okay. There's an extremely high green crab population. They love to eat them. And the last time someone put clams over here, I don't know who was I think it was Chris Golba. One of the baymen could actually follow where they put the clams the next day, where all the crushed shells that were. Might have been us, because we did. I mean, we did stuff right off of the dock a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, but literally, you could. It was like yeah. bread crumbs on the bottom. He said you could see the white crushed clam shells wow. where the green crabs the night before, two nights before, had eaten literally every one of them. Well, well, definitely. That's why you know it's, it's uh, um, hundred thousand sounds like a lot, but you know it's not so. Not so. Um, no. <laughs> so that's why we want it. You know, yeah. we won't put out. A, a huge yeah. resource. We'll see how it well, goes. We'll there there is a it. very large uh, uh, group of, not a large, uh, a very ambitious group of baymen that are green crabbing over here because uh, they're a good uh, Bait. market for the uh, Asians. They use them for food now. So Nice. So That's good news and, for and they're not They're not an indigenous species. They're not supposed to be yeah. from around here. I know. So We don't want them. <laughs> no. And can no. you talk about this too? Oh, sure. So yeah, that was just um, an example of if we do um, end up doing this, we had done some work with um, Great Peconic Race a couple of years ago, and it's something we're continuing on, kind of like these um, stewardship paddles, so involving the paddle community 
I'll keep you posted on this. Um, but that's why we also wanted it to be kind of in the vicinity of where we could launch. Um, you know, we could have folks park here, launch their paddle boards or, or kayaks, meet our boat out there, load up with the spot on shell, and we buoy off the area. And it's a yeah. really great interactive, you know, hands-on thing for the paddlers. So we were hoping to maybe try to do it, you know, before the weather gets um, too bad. So if we could figure it out, you know, by next month, I think we'll still probably try to do something. If not, we'll definitely be continuing that. Ideally, spat on chill usually is done in the in the summer. That's usually when it's ready, but we're doing so much production. We've just kept it going. So we have stuff ready still this fall. So, um, but yeah, ideally next summer we'll be able to do more. And obviously it's always nicer to have paddle events in the summer. So, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see what we can do for October at least. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thanks, Kim. I'll get going on my end, so. Sounds great. All right, thanks, Kim. Thanks, thanks Kim. <clears throat> Waterfowl sanctuary sanctuaries designated area. Have you guys looked at the proposed areas that um, the new location? I have. You have. Um, I'm fine with them. Um, the only concern that not sanctuaries. Uh, is, what are we doing here, bitch? Uh, these are the two. Proposed new areas for hunting. I got Wait, it wrong. Which one are we doing? Um, we're not doing the sanctuaries. We're doing right? proposed new the, area. The proposed new area for the blinds. new waterfowl. Yeah, that's locations. first I'm seeing of this. Okay. This is the first you're seeing of it of the, of the proposed new area here. What do you yeah. got in here? Is this Harwoods and Stafford. They're the two uh, areas that are proposed as far as for blinds. For blinds, one in Sagaponic and then one in Red. Well, Stafford's not here, obviously. Yeah. Did Vichy go over this? Yes. Would he, would he go over with, with you? He went over with me and Billy. Not, just, not this. I did not go over with this. No? Vichy, no. Um, Could uh, you just tell us where they are? And it, then it's here's, here's the map. Well, it's actually, there's only one of them in here. What are we on right now? Are we on sanctuary area? No, no. we're talking new. about the proposed new waterfowl wow. hunting locations. And I thought there was two of them here, but I don't... Is there two of them there, Billy, or is there just one? There should be two, I believe. I, I have this one. <laughs> I only have the one... Well, there's one in Red Creek, um, which is... If you Are you familiar with Red Creek Pond? Uh, the launching ramp, uh, it's one duckwood court. It's northwest of the launching ramp. It's about... Uh, 610 feet from Thank the launching you. ramp. Um, I'm not particularly keen on that one because of the amount of baymen that use it in the fall of the year for this scalloping. This one in Red Creek? Yes. It so. sounds like it's too much pressure and on there's the area. A, well, yeah. it's, it has the appropriate distance, but what's going to happen is there's a lot of people that go down there and launch their boats to go scalloping during the scallop season. And then to continue on past that, uh, a lot of people on Saturdays and Sundays go down there painting, take pictures, and it's, 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 it's a really utilized by the community. A lot of people go, uh, you know, paddling their kayaks and, and paddle boards and, uh, in, up until December there. So I don't think it's a, an appropriate spot. Okay, that's okay. just my... That's not going to work. So, I mean... Is that okay? Yes. No, I'm just bringing... And also, this one here in SAG. We should get look at the. There's a couple other blinds in this location, in this area. Here's the uh, narrative. Here it's 800 feet. There's about five. I just paddled in there the other okay. day, actually, on yeah. the perimeter. And there's probably I didn't count specifically, but there's at least four or five blinds in there. Okay. Um, birds won't have a chance. Well, that's that's another. T we're gonna have another topic of discussion here too after this, but sanctuary. So, uh, the shoreline. Go ahead. I have to talk to Rich about that. All right. I mean, uh, I mean, it could be okay, but I want to talk, and I want okay. also to see an overhead shot of where that other blinds. And she says there's five blinds in there. 
Why don't you get a GIS of all of Sag Pond where the hunting yeah. locations are, and then you could plot this on there, and you could see how yeah. close they are. Yeah. And that it's, would. It could it, be fine, you know. I, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm yes. somewhat familiar with Sag. Um, I know there's one on the point here. Okay, so if you got a GIS map of Sag with the blinds uh, put on there, then we can get in a good idea. Yeah. Right now, we're just going, unless you're physically going to go down there and uh, paddleboard or kayak or boat through there, you're not going to get a good idea. No, I'm not going there with paddle. I get wet. I don't like that water. It's, not, it's clean, though. All right, so you want me to put that back in here? And yeah, so we don't lose it. All right. Um, short haul for the work barge. James, do you have the paperwork on that? All right, I talked to... Uh, I think it's ten dollars a foot. It's about three hundred dollars. Um, the work barge that we have now um, is not in very good shape. It hasn't been hauled out in two years. Um, this is all I have. It, it needs to be hauled out and examined uh, as far as safety and to be able to uh, keep working on it. Um, it's ten dollars a foot. It's between two and three hundred dollars. So I would like what uh, place? Uh, Stabellix. They'll do a short haul. Okay. Um, then Al and the Bay Constables can go down there and assess what's what needs to be fixed on it. The yeah. decking is kind of soft with the uh, A frame is, and um, we don't know what what else is could be possibly wrong yeah. with it. So I just want to run it by everybody okay. so we can be done. take it out, do a yeah. short haul, see what's if it's worth worth fixing or not. Yeah, because we're we're in cross. So so you're getting an estimate of what needs to be done. I got an. Yeah, we're getting an estimate. Yeah, it's three hundred dollars to haul it out. Have to haul it out. Then, then they come down, take a look, and see yeah, what yeah. has to be fixed on it's it. It's like a survey of a boat, but the bay yeah. constables, uh, Alan, Rich, are very familiar with it and have so, done work so on it. So if they can fix it, or, or it goes to the dumpster. Yeah. So all right. So I'll tell them that. And then that, they got to work on the A-frame. Yes, we're working on the A-frame to get a price. For but the, we got a price. We got a price. Yes. Everybody. Like Seventeen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. which makes sense. You're familiar with that? The uh, one of the uh, um, work barges that well, one of the work boats, the pump out boats Ports that on are surplus. We're going to take no, it's the not surplus. It's off season. We can use it. As okay. We want off season. We're going to take the tank out of it. We're going to have <coughs> Sound Marine uh, build a uh, the boat up and put an a aluminum a frame on there or an a frame on there hydraulic with hydraulic can, can fold down so yep. you can trailer it yes. fold up, then a hydraulic back so up. instead of having a work barge drive from eastport to sag harbor in two days we can put the boat on a trailer drive it down there change buoys put poles in and do and we'll have a mobile uh boat it works so much better it work much better and two guys can operate it not three so It'll be a much more uh, you know, efficient. Efficient. It's going to be way more efficient. Yeah. So we, we need that. No, we do. We need that. We've been talking. Billy and I have been talking about for this years. for about eight years. More. Or seven. Or how long have you been a trustee? <laughs> That's one thing we agree on that we should do that. Um, waterfowl sanctuaries and designation areas. Um, as you know, Fred Havermeyer approached the board about sanctuaries one in uh, West Neck uh, complex um, one by the uh, Pond Bridge one that would be in uh, Fish Cove in uh, North Sea Harbor one in Little Fresh Pond and there was another one that was in uh, one of the ponds in uh, was it not Fat um. not Fallows not Jewel um. Fa Fallows Pond could be Fowler's Pond. Fowler's no, Pond. not no. The other one, and one in between Fowler's Jules. What's the one in between? Channel. Channel. No. No, that's no. Channel. I don't have the paper. So, so we don't have the we don't have the specifics. Uh, that I don't know. It I was I don't have little, all fresh, the little fresh, and then the one in yeah. the uh, yeah right. yeah. And Shinnecock. Right who's who's spearheading this? I have no idea. Me and Billy and, and Richie. Richie. So hey. we need we need you know. Well, what, I, what I'm going to add, if, if we're interested in entertaining this, yeah. I want to get GPS coordinates of, of each one of the areas 
So point to point. Point to point and, desig and designate the areas outside of where the sanctuaries will be. I think it's a really good idea uh, doing these and designating them as specific sanctuaries because right now they can all be hunted and you know and the animals need a place to rest we, we have a lot of uh, a lot of blinds and I think it would be good for the trustees showing that we're willing to put sanctuaries around well, in multiple places through the town we talked about this a couple of years ago yes we did we did one we, we did one up in West I did one up in um, Rupsenburg yes we, we talked pulled, about this that, uh, when you talked about it the conversation was about how changed out here just as far as how much pressure there is no just some pressure off the resource and give them a place to rest, rest. We, were, we were all for that i think it's just that we end up sidetracked with the fires that you yeah. run throughout the day that yeah. you know some of these great but, projects but, get pushed unfortunately for the area specific that i know that duck ducks rest there regularly and they're not hunted so my travels these are places that i've actually seen and not encouraging more people to get in you know, it's that it's not it's a bad thing but these places the people who know that area don't shoot they it. don't shoot the young the people who are not familiar with that area might go in there and shoot it yes so i want to make them sanctuaries and designate yeah. let's get the gis involved yes right? sir. we will plot this stuff out yep we're going to plot this out and i'd really like to have it done before duck season we can do it before duck season and we can perhaps I, have I'm, a public I'm, hearing and adopt it into the blue book yes and make it uh make it the law of the yeah, yes. law of the land Yes. Do we have anything else? I don't think so. Yes. One more. Um, letter of permission for underground utility work in Old Sag Harbor Road. Are they going to fix the road? Are they going to improve it better than, it, than how it is? Um, it's a letter that serves permission to perform the work behind the curb in the trustee easement located in Old Side Harbor Road. Basically, it's off the road. It's yeah, in the back. So um, it's just a letter of permission for the, me the, as the president to sign, giving the company to permission to put this. And they're going to restore it better than what it is. It before. should. It should be. It doesn't say it specifically here. I would. I would put that in the letter that it has right. restored better than what it is. Okay. Because they might just dig it and then throw some dirt over it and forget about it. Do you have the draft letter now? Yep. If you if you send it around or just that's great. You want to come in? Would you like? To? Okay. Okay. Um, going forward on these uh, applications for this work to be done, I think we should come up with some kind of fee schedule for them and an actual permit that is in our office for the road for the road yeah, and for the work that. done because if there's ever a question of liability who did yeah. it and anything that fails there and because some jobs you might have to you have bonded that way you pay that is bonded for yeah, a million is, dollars but yeah. future we're not all going to be here forever yeah. so the future boards will be able to have this as a uh turning turn back point i agree with you on that okay You said going forward. Yes. As far as that. Ball. Yeah. Okay. It's an it's a, an adoption to the blue book. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. And uh, that's it for the agenda. So, if no one else has anything. I'd like to adjourn. I'd like to go into um, executive session for litigation for five minutes. Okay. We don't we don't even have our counsel here. We don't have our council. Really. We don't have our council. How? Well, we can talk about it. Bill, let's that would be an illegal meeting. Let's, okay. let's wait till we have. Let's wait council. until we have a meeting. Can we put it off to Monday's meeting? If you want, if that makes more sense. Is it something that I can get the information and I have that? Or, or is it? Let's wait till. Let's wait, uh, wait till. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's best we do it with our council here. Okay.